wants to argue is that uh, we should then understand all of the Starbucks retail owned stores in Buffalo as a single entity, and therefore these two districts that make up all of the stores in Buffalo should have one single election where the uh, some 450 um, baristas and shift supervisors. absolutely ludicrous. If I work at a store right now that has lesser interest in forming a union, uh, I've... Which is, which one? I worked at the Orchard Park store. Uh-huh. And uh, I've oh, had God. Lots of conversations with people there, and people are lesser interested in forming a union there. And people that, talk, that I talk to there see you know, these kinds of tactics for, for, exact, for exactly what they are. Right. Like, they don't think that they should be voting in an election. They have no interest in Right. What is important to be said is that there is precedent with the NLRA for individual stores to have unions. This is something right. that has existed. Right. So. Sure. Yeah. Well, they're just trying every trick in the book. Anything they can think of yeah. that would stall, stall. You know, that's the old. Uh, and that's how they win a lot of times is because they have the resources to wait, wait you out. Wait you out. Yeah, and pe- post them all over the place. Sure. And, and you go by Vicky again, right? Yeah. Okay. Or victory. victory. I go by that especially lately. <laughs> 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 Actually, when I was 16, my friends started calling me that. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. So, how long has this show been? That's oh, been. boy. We've had a show on. Um, we've had a show on uh, WBNY, which this show will air on oh, WBNY. guest is here. Oh, good. Wonderful. Oh, oh, yeah, because we're cutting the, the top of uh, James' head off. I don't know. Yeah, no, there's no... Unless... Here. I don't know how to... Hello, Vicky. I'm gonna let you know where your Hi, Zool. Your headset is over. How are you, love? Yeah, I know where my headset is, but I just don't know how to reset. Can you just make it so, James, we're not cutting off the top of his head? Oh, sure. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Hi, Zool. Hello. <laughs> Nobody can see it. So, did I, I? you may have seen, did you see the new show, Plan of Show? Zool? Uh, no, I, I just know that I, I was to be in at 7.20, and I've got about 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll just plan on having you only in for the first 15 minutes then. And then, Richard, if you could be ready to sort of re, reconfigure the, um, the, the, uh, the cameras and stuff. After about 15 minutes or whatever, when when Zool leaves, so then you're going to miss a lot of what James has to say. James, meet Zool. Zool, I don't know if you can see. Can you see anybody yet? I see all. I see three of you. I see you, Vicky. I assume that's you, James, and I don't know. James, this is Russell. I'm Russell. So Russell is. Yeah, Russell is part of the Western New York Peace Center. Um, and Veterans for Peace. And Veterans for Peace, yeah. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm also a New York City member of Vets for Peace. Right. As I, I was telling that vet, Veterans for Peace might be the single biggest uh, factor or, or, you know, organizer of the Rising Together in New York City. Right. Well, we have we have quite a membership, but we've got right. people from Extinction Rebellion, sure. Code Pink, right. uh, Raging Grannies, many many groups, right. And uh, and of course, very importantly, World Beyond War. Right, right, of course. But so, anyway, but on just that, on that note, uh, what is interesting is World Beyond War, which is an international organization, have chapters all over the world, has not had a chapter in New York City right. until now. Right. And there are a couple of thousand individual members 
our chapter in New York City rising together for a world beyond war will be taking organizational members and our Vets for Peace chapter was the first. So we've just increased the membership by almost a thousand. We expect Code Pink to join soon, Brooklyn for Peace and many other groups by right. Sunday. Right. So, um, so Richard, are, are we almost ready to start? Facebook is ready if you're ready. Oh, good. Okay. Are you ready? Okay, so I'm ready. Everybody can hear each other? Yeah, I can hear. Oh, Blue, nope. wait a minute. How come we can't hear him? Can you hear me? No. Oh. Let's try oh. it again. What about now? Oh, oh that's better. I was going to say, I can hear him because he's right here. <laughs> right, <laughs> I didn't right, think right. I heard another thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, was, I couldn't tell if I was, oh, now I can hear myself. Okay, well, Zul, you might want to watch the show later on on the <laughs> Western New York uh, Peace Center Facebook page if you want to hear some of more of what James has to say. I know you were very interested in what's going on with that. So, anyway. Yes. Uh, yeah. and, the, uh, and, and Russell's here mostly about um, resisting militarism, which he's the co-chair of the Resist Militarism Task Force of the Western Well, Peace well Vicky, yeah. Vicky, perhaps you'll do a round of introductions we as will soon be. as we start. So of course let's do we that will. Now. Let's do that now, and then I can hear Hun, what they, those guys are doing. Why don't you just hold that. on a minute, and we're, we're going to start the show in a minute when we start taping for the radio, okay? okay? We'll do introductions and all of that. Step one, Vicky, is for you to throw the silver switch. Is it counting yes, back it from 5959? Right. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Put the clapper in front of your face. When you hit the clapper, you're on the air. Welcome to Talking Peace with the Interfaith Peace Network being produced here at Think Twice Radio in the home of the future. Thanks to our great producer, Richard Wicca. Hi, Richard. Thanks. So um, we have a really important show today, I think, um, especially bringing together, as we, we often want to, to bring together all our struggles, to unite our struggles, our visions, and ourselves. So, um, so we have a, a number of spe very special guests. We have, um, well, why don't I just go around, you know, uh, counterclockwise. I think we'll start with Russell. Brown is the here. Hi, Russell. Hello. <laughs> so Russell, has a friend of the show, you've been on the show before. Yeah, quite um, a while ago. Right. So uh, as the co-chair of the Resist Militarism Task Force of the Western New York Peace Center, as well as the chair of uh, Veterans for Peace Chapter 128, thanks for coming. No problem. I'm happy and to then, be here. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Russell. Then we have Zul Zulkowitz, who's here uh, zooming in from New York City. Hi, Zul. Hello, Vicki. Hello, James. Hello, Russell. So, so Zool is here representing uh, the the Rising Together group event and um, really movement or movement of movements. We sometimes say that is uh, about just that that we're doing at the Western New York Peace Center frequently of just you know looking at how all our issues and all, all of us are interrelated and interconnected and our solutions as well. So thanks, Sewell. Thanks for coming. And uh, and James, James, James Scretta, right? That's right. Yes, yeah, James Scretta is very, uh, very, mu very much in the news lately, as as a, um, oops, sorry, <laughs> as as a um, an organizer for the uh, you call it SB. Uh, workers United, right? That's right. SB yeah. Workers United. Yeah. So we won't. Uh, so we can talk about Starbucks, but you can't use that in your name, right? Well, uh, not yet. In, informally, we call ourselves Starbucks Workers United. Yeah. We're all um, workers at Starbucks. I'm a barista at Starbucks. And, right. Uh, uh, SB Workers United is the organizational name we've adopted. Right. Right. But the work is going on. So it's going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's been in the news all the time, especially here in Buffalo, but also nationwide. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll be so glad to share more about it and glad to be here. Yeah. So we're we're excited. And I, I, I was excited to put together this show because it really is just what we've talked about, about how things are related to each other. So I think maybe, you know, if we let you sort of kick that off, Zool, with um, Rising Together, which is going to be taking place in New York City this, it's Sunday the 19th. 
and uh, in Foley Square, Thomas Paine Park. We're very excited. Tell us a little more about how that all came about and what you're hoping to do on Sunday. Well, well, thank you so much, Vicki. You've been a wonderful part of this work as we are connecting the dots among issues and causes from Assange to Mumia, from COVID to climate chaos, from Palestine to the Philippines, from the Amazon rainforest and the Amazon workers unionizing to the children starving in Yemen. We're connecting the dots, and we've managed to bring together a coalition ranging from Black Lives Matter groups, Code Pink, to Extinction Rebellion, Veterans of Peace, World Beyond War, Pacifica Radio. So this coming Sunday, for those of you who are in New York, Sunday the 19th, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., we'll be in Foley Square, Thomas Paine Park. For those of you who are outside New York, you can watch on Facebook Live, Go to our website, risingtogether.info. That's risingtogether.info. And there'll, you'll see two red buttons. Uh, one says register. Please do, because this is a coalition, a movement of movements, as Vicky has said. And New York's an international city, and we're taking uh, members, individuals, and organizations from all over the world. So do please register. And then button below that says uh, watch on Facebook Live. So you'll have that opportunity on Sunday the 19th between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern. You know, the mission really began, oh, many, many years ago. Dr. King talked about it in a speech to his staff in 1967 when he first talked about the three evils of racism, right. uh, in, inequality, uh, poverty, and uh, militarism. So now we add to it the fourth, um, environment. And so we're addressing all of those. And I must say, I'm very excited to be with folks from Buffalo. You guys are really ahead of the curve in many ways with your new Thank mayor you. and your well, Buffalo <laughs> Poet Laureate, um, Jillian Hainsworth, who's coming down to New York to, to give us um, some words. So we're excited about that. And what you guys are doing up at Starbucks is amazing. You know, New York City is a coffee town. People shell out five bucks a couple of times a day. If we can organize the baristas in New York, that would be fantastic. Because Starbucks is not the highest level chain of coffee houses in New York. We've got Le Pain Quotidien, we have Maison Kaiser, we have Prêt de Manger, we have quite a few others. And those upper end ones could be very quick to unionize because they know they have a demographic who will go to a unionized shop that'll put a lot of pressure on Starbucks in New York City and around the country. And that will put more pressure on Amazon. And we're going to see an Amazon union, an international union. I'm telling you, it won't be that long. You know, I'm so excited about uh, what you said because, well, when I think of really the Western New York Peace Center and, and the Interfaith Peace Network have both gotten involved in just about anything to come along. This is why Kathy Kelly got in touch with me when you originally started planning this. The, the, um, the way Dr. King brought out the way all those issues are connected. And when we think about that pow power over instead of power with or might is right and all of that. So that's where... All of these things are together, the capitalism, the, the empire and imperialism, the um, consumer society and the violence and the endless wars that we've all been subjected to in whatever amounts and ways. Um, so anyway, we, so we live, in, we live in the United States of Amazon, whether you call it uh, surveillance capitalism oh, or then China surveillance communism. We're all being surveilled. We're deep in surveillance capitalism, long been in disaster capitalism. And right. listen, any of us catch uh, cold here in New York State, you know, people are sneezing in Tokyo tomorrow and dropping dead in Dakar the following day. So our mission is to build coalition, to rise together. You right. know, the 1% is having a fling, an outer space at the expense of the 99%. And we're not going to put up with it. This no. Friday, it's the 10th anniversary of Occupy. Right. Extinction Rebellion New York mm -hmm. City is going to have um, arrestable actions. We expect it to be the biggest one so far. And we've got, you know, weekly um, vigils and demos. Say their names where we repeat the names of young sure. black and brown 
uh, men and women uh, killed by law enforcement. Um, the Yemen uh, vigil we do every Saturday morning in uh, Union Square, a vigil we do for Julian Assange in Grand Central. Women in black is down, uh, down on sure. 14th Street for Free Palestine. So bring it all together. But what you guys are doing is so important and can be so helpful for what we need to do here and around the world. So folks should go to risingtogether.info. Please look at what we're doing. There are downloadable flyers. You can make little videos. We're giving away free whistles. The whistles say, I'm a whistleblower for justice, people, and planet. And at 5 p.m., uh, here's the whistle. Can you see that? There's the whistle. I'm sorry, I it forgot the, to bring mine. I can't hear it. Oh, okay. Well, it has the tree logo on it. Right. Get it right. It has yep. the tree logo on it with mm -hmm. the branches and the roots and the straight trunk. And it has the website, risingtogether.info. And it's important. We're going to make these videos at the whistleblower video booth in uh, Foley Square. But you can also make them at the website. And uh, they're going to go out on social media. And we think some of them, you know, we're expecting one from Martin Sheen. We're expecting one from you, Vicky. I Maybe sent one you one. From... I already oh, sent well, you okay. mine. All right. That has to be uploaded. It will be. Yeah, um, I did send Pam you mine. Africa. I'm quite sure. <laughs> Pam Africa from Omega Coalition Wonderful. is coming Sunday. Mm -hmm. Medea Benjamin, Chris Hedges, so many folks. And uh, they're going to make these videos. They're going to go up. We expect them to go viral. And this is all in advance of what will be a rising together live global Pacifica broadcast sometime maybe midwinter if we do it indoors, maybe early spring if we go out. And we're looking at potentially tens of millions of listeners and viewers for that. So we'll expect Thanks. you to be down for that one. Thanks. Thanks, Zool. So, so James, would you, what would you say? How does that all um, connect to what you've been working on? Does it? Does it? <laughs> I mean, there are so many. There are so many. There are so many. Yes, there are so many. I, I, you know, I think uh, I'm happy to talk more more now, but I know that Zul only has. Zul, so, are with you going to stay with us a little bit longer, and uh, or do I you need you to another, go? I can give you three more minutes, but I'd really like to hear what what the other folks have to say. Well, that's why I'm asking. I mean, if you if you need to leave now, or you no 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 to no, stay no I, okay, I, just I'll, stay on I'd as like long as hear. you want. No, I want to hear what these, sure. these folks have to say, and then I'll and then I'll give a parting word before I go. Yeah, Thanks. thank you, Vicky. Zul, um, it's so exciting to hear about everything that's going on. Um, Buffalo is an exciting place. I'm glad I'm here. Uh, if I wasn't here, I wish we I were in New too. York City with you. So, mm -hmm. um, I think something really important to speak to is um, the way in which Starbucks likes to brand itself as an incredibly progressive mm -hmm. organization. And I think that we're seeing this, um, as this sh as this show is trying to bring together all of these threads that are critical of the forces that are preventing us from lifting everybody up together. Right. One of those forces, unfortunately, is the way in which uh, large corporations brand themselves as progressive, but then actually stand in the way of right. empowering the people right. who make those corporations run. And mm -hmm. that's what our campaign at uh, and Starbucks is ultimately all about. You know, Starbucks calls the baristas, the shift supervisors, the ma the managers, even the CEO. We are all partners. We're partners mm, right. in this organization. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and so they say. So they say. But talk but. to talk to any person in an organization that is massively hierarchical. Mm -hmm. You can call people whatever you want. The people on the bottom of that hierarchy certainly are not actual partners in the organization, even though uh, we are the, uh, I'm a barista. Um, mm -hmm. I'm one of the people that work on the floor and mm -hmm. am intimately connected to all of the day-to-day -day operations that are very, very customer facing. Uh, what it's like to be in the store, to give somebody what it is who's coming to Starbucks mm -hmm. um, for, you know, we're, we are there to help create that experience for them. Right. And what the baristas, the shift supervisors, uh, the uh, people who are working to form unions at Starbucks here in Buffalo want is real partnership, not just uh, not just corporate coming in and making changes for us when they hear people complain about frustrations. We want a seat at the table where we can bargain a contract that gives us the kind of 
uh, uh, buy-in from a legal standpoint into the organization because that's not something that we actually have right now. You know, Starbucks claims that um, they listen to partners. There's a portal that any partner can submit a uh, frustration to if they have a problem with anybody. People people submit submit things to the partner um, partner resources pages all the time. People mm -hmm. submit. Uh, responses to the weekly surveys mm -hmm. very little has ever changed at the stores but you know there's um there's a winning um example before you at starbucks because um years ago before medea benjamin founded code pink she was a founder with kevin danaher of uh, global exchange and right. for years starbucks for all its greenwashing whitewashing can i say bullshit on the internet um uh uh, finally, no, actually, because this is get this is going on WBNY. So okay, leave here, it, please. Just make um, a little. So uh, <laughs> thank you. So um, no, but we won. Uh, you know, not everything we got, but Starbucks is for whatever it's worth. Fair trade. We're not so, so sure if that means any more than when it says organic at at, at Whole Foods. But um, we have a winning strategy here. Well, one of the things I'd mention is that the income and asset distribution in this country is the worst in the developed world, mm -hmm. as it has been, and it has gotten progressively worse. So it is even worse. It is worse than ever before, with a slight caveat that there's been a, somewhat of an increase to aid for people over the pandemic. But it has largely gotten very much worse, which is to say those profits from the $5 coffees are not going to the workers. So that's the problem here. And, I mean, that's where, you know, it's so exciting to see you all rise up. And, and you want to tell their latest shenanigan what they're trying to do to so help you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, what, what I can say is that our campaign, SB Workers United, um, we uh, made ourselves public. Um, a little over three weeks ago now. Mm -hmm. um, we filed petitions with the NLRB, the National Labor Relations Board, to hold mm -hmm. elections at three different stores uh, a little over two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, no, it was two weeks ago uh, from, from today. We held a press conference that same day. With um, India. India Did Walton came out and supported us. Congressman Brian Higgins was mm -hmm. there. So was uh, uh, Senator, I believe it was State Senator Kennedy. And uh, there was one more politician there. I, I right. uh, wasn't able to be there myself. But anyway, you know, mm -hmm. we filed these petitions and um, there is precedent with the NLRB for individual stores to file petitions within a large corporation. You know, one, uh, for example, Starbucks has over 8,000 retail owned stores in the United States. And uh, any one of those stores, there is a historical precedent for for uh, supporting there being a union vote at one of those stores. Mm -hmm. Starbucks now, uh, now that they see that there are uh, more than just three stores that want to uh, hold union elections, there are now five. Um, two stores filed for an election uh, a week ago from today again. Mm -hmm. um, Starbucks first asked that all five of those stores be uh, heard, um, all, all those petitions be heard at the NLRB under just one hearing, group all of them together. What this is is a massive like delaying tactic. Ultimately, there's a time frame between when you file for an election and when the NLRB must make a decision about when that election will be held. It, mm -hmm. um, it used to be a much shorter time frame, but Trump rules at the labor board um, made it made it like a, th a three week window. So right. there's a hearing next week on September 22nd. Mm -hmm. Starbucks wanted to argue that all five of these stores should be heard together. So it would have pushed that hearing back even further, giving mm -hmm. Starbucks more time mm -hmm. to intervene. They have sent in swarms of corporate uh, corporate um, I, I, corporate partners. It feels disingenuous calling them them partners. They're, oh, okay. they're you know the leaders of the. Uh, the excuse the company, me, Vicky you know. uh, and James. Uh, bravo, James. Brilliant. You work. have to go. Truly trend setting. You've got a national movement going over there. Um, Vicky, bravo. Thank you so much. Do you want to uh, hear Russell, Russell a, a snapshot? He's go. He's or go. you have to go. I, I, I got to go. Okay. I'm so glad to be with you, folks. Please join us Sunday. The 19th, this Sunday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern. Go to risingtogether.info. Hit your watch on Facebook Live button and join us that way. Register and be with us in all of these movement of movements. Thanks so much. Love you, people. Thank you. Thanks, Take Zool. care. Take care, care Zul. We'll see you.
So, yeah, that'll be that'll be uh, something more to to think about. So, so you were as you were saying that they've 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 got their stalling tactic um, up and running. Yeah, and the the latest the latest and thing that Starbucks is trying to argue is that all 20 stores in the Buffalo district should now be considered mm -hmm. as a block. So mm -hmm. over 450 employees should all take part in a union vote together to determine whether um, the, all of the stores in Buffalo will be represented by a union, when so far it is only five stores that have expressed the interest in having a vote at their store. I will say that I work at a uh, Starbucks, the Starbucks in Orchard Park, mm -hmm. where uh, I love the people I work with. Mm -hmm. I have a great relationship with my manager, who I think is an outstanding person. Mm -hmm. There is lesser interest in trying to form a union at my store. Uh, which I respect my my coworkers for completely. Sure. Um, and many of them who have heard about this recent tactic, who who don't support uh, trying to form a union, see right through it. Right. They understand that Starbucks is trying to hobble the union. They right. they have they've told me there are two people that I spoke with today who told me that I think it's ridiculous that I should have to vote. Like I'm not interested in trying to prevent any other store right. from forming forming a union. Mm -hmm. I can say that about my store, but I can also say that there are many other stores where there is a lot of interest in trying to form a union. People working at Starbucks see that real partnership is something that we, um, something that we could have so long as we organize and uh, stick together. There are over, um, uh, uh, on our organizing committee, which now has over 100 people, there are mm -hmm. representatives from at least 15 different stores. So our movement is broad, it is energized, and we're uh, excited to keep moving forward. Well, the inter one of the interesting things about it to me is back to what we were talking about, power over instead of power with. So they say, you know, your partners, they want to have power with, but it's, it's all disguised, you know, uh, very very barely disguised um, power over. And that's why they're trying to hobble you. So I think, when I think about power over, what I really think of, well, capitalism is a big one. Um, at, at Zul was mentioning about all the surveillance and things, but especially talk about um, the war on terror, the so-called endless war on terror, or the military industrial complex. And um, the fact that, back to Dr. King again, uh, that the U.S. government, um, you know, that the greatest, as he said, the greatest purveyor of violence in the world is my own government. Mm -hmm. So that remains to be, uh, that remains true. And it, it um, I, I just want to have, to bring you in, Russell, about some of the things you're working on and about that militarism and, and how we're trying to, to stop, stop that and help people really realize what it is doing and what it isn't doing. Yeah, well, well, specifically, we're, we're on on August 29th. This is what this was what's behind what we're doing right now. On August 29th, right, they had declared the war is all over and everything. And they're pulling. Well, the the U.S. Um, killed the whole family, right, with a drone. Right. Now we've been opposed to drones for at least 10 years. We've been working against the drones, right. and um, and people got arrested, you know, protesting, nonviolent protests and stuff. And there's just no way we can move them, you know. Including and, uh, both of us, by the way. Right. I would just mention Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> Parathetically. No, yeah. but the viewers may not know. Yeah. yeah. But but specifically what happened here on, on the 29th is that the uh, it's got several parts to it. One is that this drone followed this guy. He's a... Um, a, a human rights worker. He, he he's an engineer, and he's worked for this California company in in, in Kabul for 20 years. And he, he he's uh, produced uh, food processing yeah, machines. Mostly and, nutrition. Yeah, that they're all around on. nutrition, and mm -hmm. uh, and helps the people. And he's just this great guy. And and so what they did is they followed him for 10 hours. Was that's what they said. And um, and then when he pulled into his driveway, boom, they blew it up. So, uh, what happened though is when they pulled in his driveway, all the kids were happy to see him. They all came running, and um, 
he killed seven kids, you know, 10 people altogether died in this thing. And that's one of the arguments we've always made is that they claim that they have this precision piece of the drone is real precision. They, the Hellfire missile goes in and hits it and they're right. They're going to aim at that thing. They'll hit that thing. But they don't know who's in it. At times they've claimed that um, they've had what that one guy three times they claimed they got this leader of Al Qaeda. And right. um, who, so who did they get the other two times, you know, when they got him the third time? And who, all the people that died him. around him. Yeah. So they've always been killing innocent people, you know. And um, But here, uh, if you look at the, the New York Times, went right in and did an investigation immediately, like the next day. And, and they really, they, they show, they went to the, all the places he went when he picked up his co-workers and he did this and he dropped off. And they put it all on the map there and exactly where he went. And when he got off of work, he had loaded up these uh, water jugs. And when he got from work, he filled them with water to bring them to his neighborhood because they don't, they're short water. The, the people that were watching him didn't even know he had water in his vehicle, right? And so um, the, the generals, though, after they blew it up, they all said they were... Um, extra explosions, secondary, secondary explosions, which indicates that he had uh, explosives in his vehicle. So New York Times brought in three bomb experts, and they said there was definitely no uh, extra explosions, secondary explosions. And so not only did they kill these people, but then they lied about it. So, you, you know, you always have, it's what they always do, and you have no way of knowing what's really going on over there. Right. And so um, we're going to go out to the base, and they kill people from uh, Niagara Falls, and they kill people from Syracuse, and they, they have places all over the all over the world, but all over the country, where they um, they use these MQ-9 Reaper drones, and um, and that's made by General Atomics, and and the one of the war the big warhead on it is um, the Hellfire missiles. It has two Hellfire missiles, and when they hit the car, everybody gets cooked in it. They blow it apart, and they, and uh, one of the things that got really well known about is that like they would hit people. In, 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 in these little remote villages and, and um, they would blow them apart and everybody come run out to help them and they would wait 15 minutes and they come back, they call it double tapping and they figured, well, if they're helping these people, they must be, which is another, it's all illegal. Everything they do is illegal. Right. And um, anyhow, so we, we don't know what, really how to stop them. They have a lot of power, but we really want to, well, f tomorrow we're going out there at three o'clock just to do a, a memorial for the children. We have... The, their pictures and some right. s signage and stuff like that and uh, and we're going to ask the question and we're asking other people in, at bases around the country to ask the same question did you did you kill these family on August 29th and um, because you, they don't tell you what they did which they, I understand they're not going to but places like Niagara County they're the biggest employer in Niagara County so so they, they, they don't care that you know you know that they're um their job is basically what goes on at that base is assassination. There's two there's two uh, squadrons there. One is those great big cargo planes, and the other one is the drone operation. And the drone operation is just an assassination, an illegal assassination and, outfit. And I, I would mention that in this family, that was the seven children. Three of them were toddlers. Then there were, um, you know, six and seven year olds. There were there was a 12 year old, there was one 16 year old, and there was a, a 20 and 30 and 40 year old. Yeah, these are the. the if I could show the picture. Sure, that, please. Right? Yeah. I don't know how well they're going to come out, but. Just so people can see, this is the family means this is the, the older family. people in the family. Some of the older people in the family. Um, the, the, the mother, um, she's still alive, but the father and the four children were killed. And all the children that are too small to be on that. So uh, this is probably the. Um, I, I mean, these are beautiful people, and I think right, about them. Well, it takes me to. I was in Vietnam. I was kind of naive, and I was in the service, and um, and it's the same thing. By being in the service, and and a thing like Vietnam, you're just being a terrorist. It just even if you don't do anything other than carry a weapon, you're helping to. And this is what this is all about. These are all victims. These, these are, are all killed. Yeah, just beautiful people. You know what I mean? And 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 I just and think these. And and the thing I I want to say the other thing is, some of the things that have been well known about the drone programs, is that um, first of all that that everything that that um, isn't coming from the government. The other intelligence says that for every one person that they're aiming at, 
who may or may not be guilty or may or may not be who they think it is. Right. They kill nine other people. And uh, these children the are thing. some of them. These children are often some of them. And they, d you know, that that doesn't even get addressed at all. And that for nine, nine people, for every one person they think they're aiming at, and then, as you said, sometimes they, they're aiming at somebody and it's not who they think it is. Right. Also, this signature strikes versus, um, versus uh, what, are, what are the two different Personal. This person Personal. Like if they, were going, if they were going after right. Vicky and they, and they see her, they'll blow her up. It doesn't matter who's around her. But they also, if there's a group of people gathered someplace, that's why you hear about wedding parties being blown up. Or what, two years ago they had that 30 uh, pine nut farmers, they were on their lunch break. Right. They all right. got killed because, you know, they're out there in, in the woods and they're all gathered. So they say, well, it must be Al-Qaeda and they blow them up. I mean, it's outrageous, but that's what well, they and Well, and this is an example of how outrageous, because when they had the, the thing that happened in the airport, the, the, the bombing, suicide bombing in the airport, this was the next day, maybe it was. No, and yeah. so then they're trying to, uh, or if, if even that, you know, I think it was the, the very next day. It was day. before that, yeah. No, it wasn't before. The suicide bombing was. The su suicide bombing was before right. that. and this happened And after. so then this happened after, and so it's sort of their their way to say, oh, well, we got somebody now. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we prevented another one of those attacks. No, they prevented this dad who was bringing water home to his family and community. Um, so anyway, so we will be um, remembering them, recognizing them. Um, and we will continue. There's a band killer drones campaign going on that um, certainly Russell's been involved with. I've been involved with the Upstate Coalition to Ground the Drones and End the Wars, otherwise known as um, Upstate Drone Action, which is the name of the website there. There's a lot of the drones are diabolical and they're these signature strikes are the worst because they're based on just rampant ignorance and um and, and misunderstanding. So first of all, that somebody has a gun. Well, most of the people over there have guns as in too, too many parts of our country as well, right? So that doesn't really say anything if somebody has a gun. Um, if somebody, you know, they take it, if somebody prays that that is indicative of, 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 a, of, a, of a, that they're gonna do a suicide bombing is a craziness. Muslims pray five times a day, so it, so it's just rampant rampant um, Islamophobia and ignorance, and highly traumatic for the drone operators. Yeah, they they say they have higher PTSD levels. Well, I listened to that one woman on NPR, and she was talking about as she's part of that drone team, and uh, she says after you're done for the day, all night you're thinking about. Did I kill the person that needed to be killed, or was it somebody innocent, you know? And then when you get up in the morning, all she could think about is, when I go to work, am I going to be faced with having to kill somebody that shouldn't be killed, you know? It's, it's, it's really a... It's it's a tough thing, and 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 a lot of those people they um they come from backgrounds like I I I've, I know I've listened to a couple of drone operators that they were homeless people, you know, and they had an opportunity for a job, you know, right. and 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 so when you're in the military, you don't really get to do a lot of things, and you got to do what you're told to do, unless you want to resist it, you know, and that's a that's a big step for a lot of people, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I I we could talk a lot about drones, and we have maybe we'll have a special. Uh, show just on drones pretty soon, but I want to say back to this idea of our our issues being collective, you know, our issues being related because of the principles involved. So the principle of the 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 little people, as it were, don't matter. Mm -hmm. So that means especially children certainly don't matter. Old people don't matter. Poor people don't matter. Working class people don't matter. You know that that trashing of people, that the the ignor ignoring of people and the planet, of the needs. You know, there's there's just it's just so rampant in the corporate mindset, which is part of back to the um, uh, uh, capitalism. And, and it also plugs into the thing of. Uh, Almost everybody that we've killed with drones, there's less than a dozen people. I mean, I think there might be less than a half a dozen, but less than a dozen people that were not people of color that got killed right. by drones. It's it's right. all people of color around right. the world. That right, right, right. You know, and that, that sort of plugs into it.
Right. That's yet another way. So right. racism, actually, so when uh, when uh, Zul was talking, I, I think about that a lot, and certainly the Poor People's Campaign, which is another group that I think would be very interested in what you all are doing, another group that, that the Western New York Peace Center and the Interfaith Peace Network have connected with over that, that he said the triple evils of um, racism, materialism, and militarism. Mm -hmm. Right. And to add to that, he talked about um, the environment and pollution. Um, it wasn't the problem that it has become or it wasn't clear just how serious that was. So I, I'm so we all feel very, quite sure that he would have included that, too. And that's right in there. And actually, in the Poor People's Campaign, they've been added that. And then the last thing they've added is religious nationalism which is yet another part of it. That's the American exceptionalism. That's the, all the excusiology. And that's back to might is right again, back to the corporate um, uh, uh, corporatocracy and, um, and the oligarchy, really, in this country. Yeah, you know, I think some people, when they would listen to this conversation and they hear about um, workers at Starbucks trying to form a union, mm -hmm. uh, placed next to people in the Middle East, getting killed by mm -hmm. uh, getting killed by drone operators who live here in in upstate New York, um, I, I could imagine someone might think, oh, "Wow, you, don't you don't you think that's kind of serious putting Starbucks like in the same camp as as like the military industrial complex?" And I and I would say it's like, well, I think it's important to look at what um, Western world and Western states. And the governments of those states have historically been organized around to do, and that is to protect the interests of the property of wealthy white landowners. And uh, that is the that that is the trajectory of history that has brought us to this this point here. And that practically every war uh, that you can think of for the last two hundred years has been. Um, fought at the behest of the working class, <laughs> the behest of, of 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 working people all around the world. You know why are uh, why are uh, th these people <laughs> in Afghanistan uh, being being murdered? You know they're just trying to live their right. lives, right? Right. And I think that it's important. For and this is where I think people would think it's weird. So, well, like mm -hmm. you're you're actually going to talk about Starbucks now <laughs> after right, talking right, about right. drone strikes. Well, like I think it's important to connect how all of the uh, interests of those people who are um, running these large multinational corporations are aligned with the interests of our our our, our, gov our, our governments and the and the one and the one percent precisely right. you know right. it's like people i think are very afraid of what would actually happen if you gave people a voice and you gave them an opportunity to um to have a meaningful a meaningful say in how it is that their world is structured you know i i don't think that if you really gave people who can see the humanity in the people who are being um, murdered around the world at the behest of uh, militarism would say that working people who are just trying to get by deserve to be collateral damage in the uh, um, you know quest to protect right. uh, protect our interests here you know i i don't think that people would say that people deserve to have a say in how it is that they're um, uh, how it is that their living conditions should be organized and taken care of. You know, we do we believe in democracy in this country or not? Right. Ultimately, that's what our campaign at uh, Starbucks is about, is we really believe in democracy. We want to have a say. You call us partners. Let's actually be partners. Well, right? it's also about putting people first, right? Exactly. People and people and the planet. So, we, and we didn't talk too much, but certainly the military does a lot of polluting also all over the world. And then there's the resource wars. But, you know, to me, it's about the, the way of, you know, it's partly about the principles. Mm -hmm. So the principle, if the principle is, you know, that we put profit, that we put um, might is right, that we put, those are the principles. So it's, it's more about the principles of, you know, that they're trying to quash your ability 
to stand up for the com for the common people, for the worker, for the for the the less powerful. Yeah, at Starbucks, after we went public, mm -hmm. um, gave a formal response. Um, we issued a letter to uh, the CEO of Starbucks, Kevin Johnson, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in which we asked him to sign what we call the fair election principles. And these are a set of principles that guarantee that workers at these stores will not receive intimidation or um, be specifically persuaded um, through anti-union propaganda mm -hmm. to oppose um, to to oppose the organizing effort that's happening, and uh, the CEO um, has yet to respond to our letter specifically, and Starbucks has refused to sign the fair election principles that we have asked them really? to sign, and yeah, right. uh, it's 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 really incredible. They have instead responded saying that while we respect our partners' right to organize, we do not believe that. Uh, we need to have unions in our stores to, to uh, improve working conditions. You know, and ultimately, I, I like I have to reiterate, mm -hmm. there are relatively good working conditions already at Starbucks. Like this, this campaign is not about specific grievances. This campaign that we're organizing is about building a real partnership. You know, if I leave this interview, right. having said anything at all a million times, it will yeah, be that, that we yeah, want a I, real partnership. I got partnership. to understand that from what you're saying. <laughs> right? You did it pretty good. And, and, you know, people can be critical of unions all they want. For, you know, large, um, large unions historically have struggled with internal politics. Mm -hmm. Right. Starbucks wants to say that there's a union coming in trying to get in the way of us having a real relation, having a real relationship, you know, between the partners and the uh, uh, the, the the corporate leadership. And what Starbucks doesn't understand is that we are the union. We, the partners, are the union. There is no third party coming in from the outside. Right, right. We're, we're grateful that we are getting um, the support of Workers United Upstate. We baristas don't have the funding to be able to support a legal team like Starbucks, which has hired Littler Mendelssohn, one of the most uh, egregious union busting mm. law firms in the country, to uh, support Starbucks's campaign to dissuade us from forming the union. We, we just don't have the capacity to do that, and we're grateful for uh, the support from Workers United to uh, mm. help, help, uh, help us fight for ourselves. But I need to reiterate, we are the union. Right. Starbucks says people are coming from the outside. It's like, if you, if you say that there is not room for a union at Starbucks, what you're saying is there is not room for the partners who to, work at Starbucks to be working at Starbucks. Or to be partners. Exactly. Ex you know, I, I want to make a, a little mention, too, because one of the things that we really struggle with is um, uh, the 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 when we're talking about the drone issues you know the holding a, of people accountable like who is to be held accountable mm -hmm. so these drone operators some of them who have come out at great risk to themselves talking about what what go actually goes on and Daniel Hale he just right, went to prison right so Daniel mm -hmm. Hale for one you know and other ones that have have come forward and and uh, Brandon uh, Lisa Ling, other people who've come forward and they say, well, don't give them too much of a hard time because they're on the verge of suicide. So, you know, they're they're just looking to make, a, you know, a living to have a livelihood. And, th and that's something that you talked about. And so one of the things that we think about a lot is um, how to hold the, the, the um, you know, General Lock Lockheed Martin, um, uh, general uh, 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 atomics, atomics, etc., to ha hold these people responsible because the warmongering, and I mean, you know, I call it fear ink sometimes. The the um, uh, it's it's the um, military industrial congressional because they're getting all the money. The media, which is bought, definitely bought in, and you know, even the football teams for god's sakes do a big rah-rah thing you know because it's all about getting people all excited about the military and the patriotism and this is back to why the poor people's campaign has put this as the third the fifth of the of the evils mm -hmm. being the nationalism but definitely the the uh, war profiteers are 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 
hugely responsible for making making sure that you know these these conflagrations around the globe get well funded and um and just a big business you know i mean it's it's just what's going on in yemen all of that is mm -hmm. back to you know the the corporatocracy <clears throat> and the might is right you know i I'll, I'll say that ultimately in my heart i believe in doing no harm to anyone mm -hmm. i believe in doing no harm mm -hmm. to jeff bezos like as, right. as, as a as a human right. being this person lives and shares the same ecology that we all do <laughs> we're all on sure. this planet together <laughs> but it's very painful to see um, people who live that experience particularly the uber wealthy many of whom do have compassion in their hearts i believe um look objectively at the world and not see the ways in which uh, the ways in which the inequality that the corporations um, propped up by uh, government institutions like our own continue to make it more and more challenging for people to actually have a meaningful say in how it is that our world is organized for ourselves a people working people to actually have a say in their working conditions right. and to have a living yeah. a livable living uh wage and a live livable life you know we yeah. clean water clean air and those things yeah you know if, if i could share one one Please. experience that's happening right now mm -hmm. um the president of starbucks north america rossan williams um has been in buffalo now for uh a little over two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, she and uh, some higher executives held some initial listening sessions that were um, open to be attended by all of uh, the partners in Starbucks uh, in the Buffalo area who wanted to attend. I attended one of those sessions and um, they told us that they weren't here because of a union. You know, they were just here to, li to listen. And it's, it is mind-blowing how they could be so patronizing to people that they call partners in their organization even talking to people at my store who don't support the union see this for exactly what it is like well, they know they know that they would line. not be here if not for the union right. and i think what is disappointing is the great disparity in lived experience that we have in that room i'm i'm a barista making uh, just over minimum wage here on this job, which is enough for me to to live um, live well enough. But I mean, I have no there, there's no chance that I'm going to have working that job alone um, to be able to buy a house mm -hmm. or feel like I could comfortably care for a family myself. And here is the president of Starbucks North America sitting in the room, living very very comfortably on a sick on a likely seven figure salary i wish that i could have very, asked very, them honestly very honestly in that space after having conversations about wanting real partnership can you please share with me how much money you make and i understand that like people are very sensitive about trying to uh, trying to expose people um expose those kinds of details about the um about the lived experiences of people. But I think there is something meaningful to be said about the great, great difference in perspective on what it is like to be working for Starbucks as someone who is in that kind of position where they need not have to worry about how many hours it is that they're gonna have to pick up each week to be able to feed themselves, where they need not have to worry about having to go to work sick because they're going to let down their coworkers. Um, I mean, I I fear frequently when I'm not feeling well, um, calling actually calling in sick because I know how stressful it is when I don't go in and it leaves more frustration and difficulty for my my partners to work through. It's actually pretty pretty hard on the shop floor at Starbucks. I used to, years ago, I, I used to work at the post office and I was a shop steward. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and they would do this thing where they would say, if nobody calls in sick for a week, they're going to bring in pizza. Well, I, I, I made them stop that because people are sick and and they, right. they know that all their co-workers are going to be bummed out because they took off because they were sick. Um, just so that everybody can get pizza. <laughs> it, uh, right. It's an outrageous thing, but that sort of fits in the same thing. So I'm, 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 I'm loath to 
to after everything I've just said, like launch things that sound like personal attacks on the leadership of Starbucks. Like I, I trust that Rossanne is a compassionate person right, right. Her, herself. That. And I'm grateful for how much Starbucks has thrown behind support for LGBTQ plus community. Like they take Pride Pride Month so seriously. And as someone from the queer community myself, I'm deeply grateful for that support. I want to ask Starbucks, why is it that you will take such a progressive position as supporting uh, the LGBTQ community, but you have a problem with the labor movement? Well, because it's threatening to them. That's right. And this yeah. is, this is, you know, I, I just want to say, I feel like another world is possible and we need to do it. You know, when Dr. King said, back to Dr. King, there is such a thing as being too late. Right now, our existential threats, and I mean the climate catastrophe that's already clearly starting, mm -hmm. and um, the, 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 nuclear, the nuclear gun, uh, nuclear weapons that are pointed at the world's head all day long every day on hair trigger alert, all of that, all of the things, you know, all of the imbalances, all of the um, threats to us that have to do with not living the way we really, we, we say and we try, but that real integrity and real solidarity, you know, that um, actually Cornell West talks about moral integrity mm -hmm. and universal solidarity. People, we, we, we sort of, you know, we can say that we agree with it, but then what does that really mean? And so for somebody like, say, any of the people you mentioned, you know, they may think they're supporting that, but then what does that really mean? So this is where we need to be ready for radical change because mm -hmm. we need radical change to make this world livable for your average person and even to survive. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's just so clear that all of these um, all of these uh, situations are so deeply related. Uh, right. was talking about um, with with unjust. Uh, unjust murder uh, over. Uh, I'm sorry. All, 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 all yeah, murder is unjust. Un, un, uh, was that un, my phrase? But un, yeah. <laughs> the, these unjust. But these. Um, un, uh, yeah, in, injustices all around the world. Right. Um, are clearly just so deeply connected to making sure that profit can be protected. And uh, and this outrageous. So that's the other thing. Profit Almost, profit stands in the way of building solidarity. Truly. And everyone really. I don't think anyone really uh, disagrees that it doesn't. For for a, a CEO to make three hundred and more than three hundred times as much as what the workers make does not make it flies in the face. So we have these radical. Um, uh, uh, changes that need to be made for just for some semblance of, of truth and love and real survival. And I think truth and love is how we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I get excited about um, things like rising together, things like the things that, that we do, you know, together, right? Whether, whether it's at the Labor Day parade where where mm -hmm. I was, I was, were you there? I yeah, was there you were too, there. I yeah. thought you were. Yeah. I thought you were. I thought yeah. I recognized you. I, I want to hear from Russell again, but I, I, I just have to jump in uh, selfishly because you said truth and love. The reason why we at Starbucks are doing this is because we actually love Starbucks. Like the baristas that work there want to have a real partnership because we love the space. We love Spar Starbucks and like Starbucks. It's not that we dislike it. Like our organizing is a labor of love. Nice. So. I, I just wanted to add one thing well, about why, drones. Yeah, please do, because we're, we're just on the verge of uh, over, so, okay. yeah. It's just that when you hear people talk, like Biden and all that stuff, mm. to, to appease the right, they're saying, well, we still have the whole over the horizon. This is an example of over the horizon. No troops are there. They sent a drone in from outside, mm -hmm. and it killed the people, and it killed innocent people. So when you hear every time you hear them say, "We have over horizon abilities," you know, well, this is 
the outcome of an over right. horizon abilities. You know, I just wanted to mention. No, that thank too. you. It's the poster child for how precise. And we had this discussion, and it, when you, uh, Russell corrected me quite rightly, he said, "Oh, they're precise, so they'll see what they're aiming at and aim, and they'll hit it." But the overall, to paraphrase, they don't know what they're doing. So their intelligence is not in is non intelligence. And then the poor drone operators who do pay the co the cost with being haunted by what's going on. With they see what actually happens. They see the people blown to smithereens. You know, um, it the, the, another another way is another world. Another way is possible. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're working on. So we have about, uh, let's say, two more minutes. So I'd just like to hear some final, sort of your final words for each of you that what you're, you know, uh, let's say working toward. Well, I, just specifically for, you know, the thing tomorrow, I think mm -hmm. it'd be nice if we came, because we do this for different things all the time, different, you know, we get together and, 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 um, they're not, very, they're not very confrontational. We're just out there to, I, you know, I, I, I'm just broken. These little tiny, tiny children, right. you know what I mean? Babies. And I, and I think of my my kids when they were this size, you know what I mean? Right. They just ripped apart, and they right. didn't do anything, you know what I mean? And um, it always brings me back to what we what I experienced in Vietnam, you know. So this is a very, so just a little thing, if, you know, or, or, or pay attention to what's going on about that, you know what I mean? Right, mm -hmm. right. And, and, and one more thing is, if I could. What they're doing now is there's drone operators involved in it, but the step, next step is autonomous drones. Right, then we'll be and the autonomous worse. drones. They're programmed. If you're one of the guys on their list, when this drone sees you, he's gonna take you out. You know, it's not like no guy had to say, "Okay, get him." Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's eventually where they're going. Or a, a particular one of those like uh, people set up in a particular way. The drone's going to make that decision. It's not a decision, but I mean, it, it's programmed right. to do that. You know? It'll be even worse. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's so right now, yeah, you know, and and they're using them for for local stuff. Anyhow, I'm I'm done. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks, yeah. Russell. Yeah, well, it's just so heavy. Oh. And, uh, and, <laughs> it's and James, insane. Um, well, what I can close in saying about our campaign is that um, in the way in which we need our world leaders to uh, listen to their constituents and organize and gather around and disavow this kind of this kind of approach that uh, Russell's been talking about towards um, policing the world that leads to uh, countless injustices. We are calling on Starbucks to be the progressive organization that it claims itself to be. It has found a way to be deeply, deeply profitable by um, by latching on to and building relationships with progressive movements. Why won't Starbucks be a leader when it comes to the labor movement? Why right. won't Starbucks really let the partners be partners? That's what our organization's slogan is, partners becoming Starbucks, or partners becoming partners. Um, if there's not a place for... That's, that's for, nice. I, I, you know, that's, that's so good. You, <laughs> right. know, you, you sum it up nice. Right. Yeah. If, if there's not a place for a union at Starbucks, then there's not a place for the workers at Starbucks, unfortunately. It's really wild what's happening right here now in Buffalo. The number of people from the corporate land in Seattle that have been out here visiting. Howard Schultz himself came out last week on Wednesday to speak to all of the managers to try and build power around dissuading people from joining the union. Rossanne Williams was at my store today in Orchard Park sweeping mm. the floors. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sweeping the floors. It's right. so wildly performative. So Starbucks signed the fair election pr principles. Let's let's have the partners really have a say in whether or not we want to have a union. Well, let's have let's have the beloved community that we can be, that we want to be by trying to live up to our principles and the spirit. And uh, we've been talking peace. And we've been talking peace in truth and love. Thank you so very much. Really appreciate you both. Um, it's a lot. Yeah, thanks for doing it's this. It's a lot. It's yeah. fantastic. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. it's very fantastic for me. And it is all about how it's all connected and how we're all connected. So yeah. we'll just keep right on making it happen. And, uh, and uh, 
yeah, it's, it's super. been a good, it's super, super having you both. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, I love yeah. this. I love the setup they have here. It really is nice. It's, it's great. great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's convenient. It's comfortable. It, it, it. In, in trying to, um, like, record a radio show that puts, puts these two topics together, I do feel, I do feel. Um, like they just deserve very different spaces only, only for I think the way in which like I would want to build like build a more concise and theoretical argument about how these two things are connected deserves like a whole conversation on sure. its own right, right. aside aside from like giving each a platform to talk about the importance well, of each I separate thing you know it's just like tried to try I, I tried to make some connections myself well, yeah I think well, you're, you're doing well too yeah I think it's about the principle 